In this video, I'd like to talk about what it means to communicate presence at work and communicate a professional presence at work. Really communicating professional presence in most ways comes down to perception. What is the perception that you would like people to, to have of you that you work with? And what is the perception that you have of them and, and how you communicate with them? So it really comes down to perception. Who are you? Who are you trying to be? Who are you trying to uh, present? And who with whom are you communicating? So when it comes out of communicating presence, just want to convey a few thoughts to you here. First, it's important to know your audience. Who is it that you're communicating with? Is this somebody you've worked with for many, many years and have a, you know, a reasonably uh, solid relationship with and know them fairly, fairly well and they know you fairly well? Or is this somebody who's new? Is this somebody who works in a different department that doesn't know you very well? Is this your supervisor? Is this somebody from the leadership of the organization? Or is this an external client, external customer, or some sort of external stakeholder? All of those things matter and how you communicate with them and, and just knowing uh, what is and what, you know, may not be as appropriate, what, you know, uh, would or would not be appropriate in that situation with that particular uh, person uh, that's going to vary from person to person. Um, what the answer is then is this appropriate well that depends on who it is and who you are and so forth. So know your audience, know who you're communicating with, uh, lean toward formality sense right lean toward formality uh, if you especially if you're uncertain in a situation it's best to be formal uh, if you don't know that person very well it's best to be more formal with them uh, and and not to take a chance even if it's somebody that you think you know pretty well it's best to to err on the side of formality you don't want to you know make a mistake and step over that line and and uh, find yourself in a difficult position then so it's best to lean toward formality and keep in mind the larger the group as well the more formality is going to be involved because the larger the group the more likely it is there are people in there who don't know you very well and uh, so you want to lean toward formality when you're dealing with a larger group setting even if there are a couple of closer colleagues as a part of that group uh, you need to consider the entirety of the group also want to listen well. This is one of the most underrated skills in personal lives and professional lives. We need to listen first uh, and, and not just in a sense of let me wait my turn to talk politely, wait politely until that person is done speaking so that I can. No, we need to be listening, actively listening to that person so that we can understand, so that we can recall that information, so that we can then respond effectively based on what that person has said. We need to, to make an effort and renew our efforts to listen well. We want to be aware of our nonverbals. Uh, people pay attention to our nonverbals, even when we're not the, the focus of that, that conversation, even when we're not the speaker, people are paying attention to our nonverbal behaviors. So we want to be aware of what our facial expressions are, what our, you know, what our gestures are, what we're doing with our hands, what our posture is, uh, what our appearance is. So uh, we just want to be aware and in control of those nonverbals as much as possible. We want to consider the channel. What's the best way for me to communicate this message? Uh, it's not always going to be email. It's not always going to be face to face. You know, is this something that can be done via an instant message or text message? Possibly, possibly. If it's important though, if it's something that has a, you know, time sensitivity issue, then, then we may need to do that face to face or at least over the phone so that we can get an immediate answer in real time. If we send an email, send a text message, those are asynchronous. It may not get there, you know, may not be read in that exact moment and we may not get the, as quick a response as we want. But if it's something detailed, detailed instructions, things that we want people to be able to refer to in the future uh, or something that we want a communication trail uh, related to that. And so we can demonstrate that we did talk about this or we did share this information, then potentially an email or an instant message, something that, that keeps a record of that would be a good idea. So we need to think about the channel. We also need to think about the channel in terms of uh, how we're communicating then, as we're going to talk about in the next one, because, you know, oftentimes an email and instant message, we have a tendency to get a little too informal as well. So uh, with that in mind, we need to remember to write like an adult. Uh, when we're in a business setting, we're in a professional setting. We need to write like an adult. Uh, it's not the time for using you know, text based contractions, like using the letters U and R for your, that sends a terrible message. We want to use full sentences with capitalization and punctuation and, uh, and using our best writing skills. Even if it's just an email to a colleague, this is something, first of all, that's going to send a message about us. They're going to draw conclusions about our competence and our preparedness from these types of things. It's also something that, that 
stands as a permanent record in a sense that people will refer to and could, could be passed around or so forth. So we want to send them an email that sends the best message about us and paints us in the best possible light. So useful sentences, use good grammar, use your best writing, use, uh, don't use contractions. Don't use uh, text-based language. Save that for your, your personal communications. When you're at work, write like an adult, write like a professional, uh, because it's going to send a message about you. Whatever we're doing, however we're communicating, we need to be mindful of the fact that it, that it goes to our presence, that it communicates something about us, that people draw conclusions from this, and uh, and so we want to put our best foot forward when we're communicating at all times. If you have any questions about how to communicate presence or you know what's an effective way to communicate presence, feel free to email me. I'd be happy to to chat with you and respond via email and and share ideas. So in the meantime, again, be thoughtful, be intentional about the way that you're communicating in the workplace, because people will see that as an extension of you. And we want to put uh, ourselves in the best possible light and put our best foot forward.